Welcome to the GAC Weekly. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams, and I am glad you are along for the ride today as we journey through the GAC. That's right, we're continuing this travel through the 12 member schools of the Great American Conference and getting the 2020-2021 season off to a, a little bit of an early start, and that's okay. I think we can do that. I think it'll be all right. We're going to leave a few things in the past, and we're just going to move right on ahead. And it is a privilege today to get to visit now with Dr. Jeff Williams, as today's stop is in Ada, Oklahoma. And Dr. Williams is the athletic director at East Central University. And by the way, thank you very much for taking time with us today. You're welcome, Joey. Thanks for the invite. Anytime. Well, listen, I know that not only do you have a lot on your plate, so I want to make good use of your time. You've been very busy lately, very busy. As a matter of fact, it's it's been a little bit of a challenge just to connect on top of all of that, but it's it's not because you're not doing things, and you really are all over the map. And I'd like to hit things from three different levels if if we can, and and we'll we'll go from wider scope down, and then get down to uh, that logo that you have on your shirt right now, and we'll talk about uh, your home team last. But first, let's get into the the greater NCAA Division Two. As you serve on the NCAA Division II Management Council, you all made some recommendations to the President's Council for acceptance to be implemented into D2 for the 2020-2021 season. And one of those I want to talk about right now, and, and I know it's it's a one-year-only deal on this, but I think it probably garnered the most attention, and that was the reduction of maximum and minimum number of contests across the board for all sports in Division Two, Can you talk about that for the upcoming season? Yeah, Joey. Well, you know, anytime you start talking about adjusting minimums and maximums of competition, uh, you expect it to be controversial. Uh, the truth is, is this process worked in a way that I don't believe was controversial at all. Everyone loves to watch their teams compete. There's no doubt about that. But my priority uh, as an AD in Division Two is watching my kids graduate. Hopefully they're wearing a championship ring when they graduate, but that's the gravy. And so the process that we went through, the, it reflected the Division II philosophy of balance. College sports are part of the educational process. They are not the process. And so we have uh, institutions that we all work with right now. They're still trying to grasp what our new normal looks like in, in a college experience moving forward. And the only thing that we know right now is it will look different. Um, we're, we're still, at least for 2021, it will look different for everyone. And so the decision that we made on the management council and the recommendations we made was that college sports are going to look slightly different for 2020, uh, 21. You know, there's bigger problems to solve in the world and even in higher ed at large right now. We have schools still trying to figure out if they're going to go fall and how that's going to look. We have, we've already had decisions made, like with the CCAA, is that they won't have fall sports because they're online. So we are still in a decision-making process, and it's still a fluid environment. And so I think what this allowed us to do was give some guidance to the membership. It was a process, and that's the way I like to leave it, is the process worked. We had 85% uh, uh, roughly participation from D2 ADs that said these maximums need to be reduced, whether that's a fiscal issue on your campus or that's a cultural or social issue on your campus, uh, or if it's just the right thing to do in the wake of what's going on, we're hoping that we can play an uninterrupted schedule next year. That's my goal right now. Uh, worrying about how many games I get to play, I know is a concern for students and, and coaches, but the bigger picture is we want to play. Uh, when you talk to the spring sports, they lost the majority of their season. Them getting on the field right now is a win. Right. So what I would say is the process worked. All right. Well, I hey, listen, I appreciate that. And, of course, you know, close to home for folks in the GAC, I mean, you, you have a Southern Arkansas softball team that I'm sure would definitely like to have finished out that season uh, for sure. But uh, anyway, as, as we talk about that a little bit more, was there anything else from the NCAA level that uh, you wanted to, uh, to discuss as well you'd like to shed some light on? Well, you know, as I said earlier, it's a fluid process. Right now, one of the things that the NCAA is working on is a, kind of a return to sport model. Uh, and Dr. Brian Hainline, the chief medical officer, is heavily involved in that because it's not as easy as just turning the lights on the gym and starting playing again. 
you know, there, there are health and safety considerations for not only the student athletes and the coaching staff and the support staff, but then when we get to game day, what does that look like? Uh, you know, we're, we're worried right now about whether the debate was eight football games or nine football games or 10 football games or whatever. But my question was, is anybody going to come watch? Uh, and if they do, what's the safety measures that we have to implement? And so I think that we'll spend the rest of the summer drilling down into those details as this ball begins to roll. We know what the schedule limits are now. So now we can build our schedules and start working back to, okay, the first game is this day. What does that game day look like? You know, Dr. Williams, by the way, in light of that, it, it comes to mind then you're talking about drilling down with the staff that, that you have on campus. And, and let's, let's think about this from, from a GAC campus perspective. I mean, it, it's obviously your staff is going to be a little bit smaller than a division one staff uh, that, and I think that's fair. So it, it looks to me like that, you know, lots of folks are going to be wearing a lot of hats too. And, and uh, a lot of protocols being learned during the summertime. That's correct. And, and, you know, uh, that's par for the course in a division two institution, there's a lot of moving parts and a little, and few people trying to cover all those bases. And so what I, what I try to prepare my people for is, is we're going to have to put some guidelines together and then we're going to have to trust our people. We're going to have to trust our fans to do the right thing. We're going to have to trust our student athletes to be committed to their team and to do the right things when it comes to safety and preventing a resurgence of, of the pandemic. Because that's what everybody's scared of is if we just go back to normal, do we have a resurge? Nobody knows. So the truth is, is, is we wade into that cautiously and over preparing is always better so so if you don't have to use it great but if you don't prepare uh that that can be a problem and so we want to do everything we can to try and give consideration to those issues that's a that's a very good way of looking at that as we speak now with dr jeff williams who's the athletic director at east central university on our gac weekly episode today and and you know, taking it down maybe a level then, let's let's look more on the conference level. You've been in a lot of Zoom meetings too. I think everybody, it seems like everyone on the planet now has. I, I really wish that about six months ago I'd purchased some stock <laughs> in Zoom, but uh, it's really become uh, the method of, of all of these meetings on a conference level. What are things looking like as well? Yeah, you know, one of the great things about the GAC is we're all like-minded. And we are a family. When I mentioned the Division II Management Council process, we had 100% participation in the surveys that the D2 ADA sent out, that the Championships Committee sought feedback on. The three committees that, that formed those recommendations were the Membership Committee, Championship Committee, and Legislative Committee. And, and our, our athletic directors and presidents, we had 100% participation rate in that process. Um, we met this past week as an administrative group. We would normally meet this week of the year uh, heading into the summer planning for next year. And so what we did was spent the bulk of our time looking at those recommendations as approved from management council. And then we crafted some draft schedules to send to our president's council, which will meet next week and consider those for adopting for the 2021 year. Uh, it, it, it changes our our outlook a little bit on what we would normally be doing. Um, and so those hopefully within the next week to 10 days, we'll be putting GAC schedules out all of us as, Hey, we know what we're playing. We know what our plan is. Uh, and then we uh, plan for the worst, hope for the best and pray we get through every one of those seasons successfully is my, my outlook. I agree. I, I agree with that entirely. I do appreciate it's one of the things, by the way, about the Great American Conference that I appreciate from my perspective and, and getting to work with the conference, uh, at least on the, the level that, that I, I get to play a part and that it is a family. And I appreciate that all the way across the board. It's, it's, it's really an enjoyable group of people to get to work with. And so I, I appreciate you mentioning that. You know, uh, you, you get down then to to Ada now. We've, we've narrowed it down and we're fine tuning now and getting to things with which you really, really deal with. And uh, you're now a part of the coaching carousel as Arkansas Tech filled its head coaching position with Mark Downey, who was formerly at Northeastern State. Well, that left a gap and that gap was filled by the now former 
head men's basketball coach at East Central, Coach Jay Haven. So I, you, you have all this other stuff going on, and now you have a now you get to form a search committee. Yeah, yeah, we do. And, you know, I, I love Jay Havens and what he brought to our program. Uh, I, I met with his team uh, this week and I told him, I said, guys, he, he, when a coach recruits you, they see a young person with a lot of potential. And then you come in and you put in the sweat equity and you put in the long hours. And at the end of your four years, you get a degree and maybe you get some some accolades on top of that. And I And I told them, I said, I view Jay the same way. Jay was a young coach with a lot of potential that was wanting a shot. And he came to East Central and turned our program around uh, and took it to a place it has not been in a long, long time. Uh, you're talking about a young man that reached 100 wins faster than Mickey McBride and Wayne Cobb, who are both Hall of Fame coaches. It took them seven years, and Jay got his 100th win in his sixth season at ECU. So, you know, it's kind of one of those proud – Proud moments for me because I saw what he did for us. And I knew him being an NSU alum, and that's where the coaching carousel started for Jay, that I knew one day if they came calling, it would be a very, very difficult decision for him. What, what I tell coaches all the time is these jobs are about timing and fit. And sometimes it's the right time, and sometimes it's the right fit. And when that adds up, um, you can't keep – a good thing from happening in that situation. So I, I, I sent out a tweet to MIAA to put them on notice. He's coming for their trophy. Um, <laughs> he, he will do what he's done at East Central. I have no doubt in that. What I'm thankful for is he left it better than he found it. And that's an old saying that gets used a lot, but he really did. And our job and our program is in really good shape. We are ready to continue the winning tradition that Jay established. The culture he established in our program is phenomenal. The first thing I told our team when I got them on Zoom was thank you for your, your spring semester because they persisted in the midst of this pandemic and they finished strong academically. Their, their team GPA is at a three point or above again. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thrilled at what those young men have invested. And that starts at the top with his leadership. So yeah, I have to find a coach now, uh, but that's part of the process. That's part of my job. And so I told them, trust us, take a breath, calm down. We'll go find you a coach uh, that can continue what we've started here. And and I don't envy you in that process, by the way, because uh, Coach Havens definitely, it's it, he'll be a tough person to follow no matter who you are. And, and that's just the way that he did leave the program, I believe, from again, from my perspective, in, in better shape than it was uh, than, than when he got there and, and he's to be commended for that. And, and you are as well for taking a chance on someone to be able to do the job and seeing that potential in that. I heard the word used a little earlier this week. Uh, it's good commissionering. Uh, so that could be good athletic directoring. Uh, we'll, there you uh, go. We'll, we'll make that. up another word, make up another word. Good verb. That's all right. <laughs> I think you, you did that. Well, uh, as we wrap up our time here today, and again, thank you for giving this time. You, know, you look around campus there, and obviously, as you've already mentioned, things will look a little different in the upcoming season as well. But, uh, you know, give us an overview of how things are looking for Tiger Athletics. Yeah, right now we're working on a return to campus plan. President Pearson is leading us into a visioning process here of what do the next few weeks look like? What does the fall look like? And so we're busy working on that on campus right now. We're all committed and excited to seeing our campus open back up in the fall as long as it's safe and, and, and uh, acceptable to do that under the guidelines. Um, we are going to now start preparing for the fall as we normally would. Um, and so we're, we're looking forward to the day when our students are back on campus, when our, hopefully later this summer our athletic facilities open back up and our students can, can resume some of their activities that they're, miss, they're missing right now. And so we're, we're just looking forward to whatever the new normal looks like, Joey. Um, and counting our blessings that we have, uh, acknowledging the challenges that we face, and then trying to, to learn. Everything's a learning experience. Uh, as I told the young men the other night, the only thing constant in life is change. So uh, you're going to wake up one day and your school's shut down by a pandemic. You're going to wake up one day and your company's been sold and you've got a new boss. These are just things that come with life. And so um, we're excited to see where we go next. Uh, a lot of people are, are 
are, are frustrated and, and scared. And I understand that. But our job as leaders is to try and set the set the direction and then get people on board to we can do this. Uh, and so that's where we're headed. All right. Well, I, I believe that the program and the department is in good hands, though. And, and uh, I appreciate your work, what you do on the school level. And let's take it back the other direction on the conference level as well. And then on the national level, I appreciate your input. And it's it's nice to you know look at some of those national committees and you get to see some names from the great American conference and go, wow, that, that person's going to do a good job. I'm really glad he or she is on that committee. And I feel that way about you being on the management council and, and uh, what you do there. So thank you for your work and, and for serving not only East central, but also the great American conference. Joey, thank you. I appreciate that. And I, I look forward to serving in any way I can to make this a better, a better environment. Thank you. Well, we appreciate uh, you for being on today. GAC Weekly continues, and uh, we're continuing our journey through the GAC. I want to say thanks to Jeff Williams from East Central for being on today. I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for watching. Please like and share this video, and please do subscribe to the channel, Midwest Sports Net. It is the home of the GAC Weekly. In the meantime, thanks again for watching. God bless you, and have a great day.